Hey folks, it's uh, it's Wade at the Shoemakers Academy. We're down here in the workshop, and uh, today we are going to look at a pair of Converse All Stars. Now, this is a request by a, a YouTube viewer because we we had talked about Stan Smith, and we had looked at some uh, some Jordans, and uh, so let's take a look at All Stars. And actually, the the commenter noticed that there's a bit of a slight material change in the in the all-star and uh in uh, and when i went and got this pair and i'm like sure enough so let's uh let's get into it thank you for coming so first thing uh beautiful you know condition of the box so it's however it got here actually i bought this at the outlet store um just after christmas so it says box made in vietnam and i'm pretty sure that the shoe is made in vietnam too uh let's open it up here uh, qc39 okay thanks for that and uh, just regular white paper. And here we have just bone stock standard uh, Converse All-Star. And I bought my size, because actually uh, back in the day I used to wear these uh, with my much younger feet and legs. But uh, you know what, I might kick around the house in these. And then actually there's some things, we'll, we'll take a look. Okay, so uh, packaging, pretty well standard, nothing special here. Okay, well, let's, let's set that aside. Okay, so. First things first, um, we got a pair. Yep, made in Vietnam. Okay, both men's 12. Made in Vietnam, men's 12. Okay, so what are we looking at first? Um, are they clean? And the answer is yeah. I mean, of course, what is black show? But actually looking at the, the outsole unit, you know, basically everything is nice and clean. Um, you know, because we're looking at vulcanized, there's a few things that, that we're going to look at. Um, but looking at the upper quickly, I mean, a few things specific to Vulcanize. And uh, as, I, as I bring these two together, what I'm looking at here is just, just we're looking at symmetry, right? The eyelets and the outsole unit, right? So these, you know, where this, where this toe tip attaches, actually, you can see, we'll get these lined up. You know, okay, not exactly, not exactly <clears throat> lined up to each other. And let's flip them over and look at the outside of the shoe and see there too. Okay, well, you know, hey, a couple of millimeters uh, between friends, you know, not a, you know, that's, you know, because this is put on by hand, that's what happens. Um, now let's, let's take a look at the, the license plate here on the rear. And if you remember the Vans shoe that we looked at, you'll notice that the Vans shoe has a big bump. Actually, you know what? Let me look. I, I've got one here. The Vantu has a has a big bump in the back where all the tapes overlap each other, right? But the Converse, they don't they don't do that actually. Um, and actually, when I look at this heel, I don't you know what we're, what I'm looking for is because this piece of tape is extruded, right? It is laid on to the upper, and then they at some point they have to join the the edges together. And on the on the van shoe, they put it in the back. And they let it overlap on purpose, so it makes that big bump. But that's just that's the style. Converse now they they don't do that. Actually, you can see where they've wrapped the tape all the way around, and it joins up here on the medial side, you know, just under the just under the first eyelet. And basically, you can see that they don't overlap at all. They they just kiss together. So that makes that nice and smooth, and it makes the license plate flat. Okay, fine. Uh, it's not good or bad. It, it just is. Okay. So again, looking at the rest of the shoe, you know, when you're looking at a, at a, at a dark colored shoe with light colored stitching, that basically, you know, shows you every stitch, right? So if a stitch is out of place or if a line is wandering or whatever, uh, it's really easy to see. And, and I've worked and actually here, I happen to have another a pair of highs here. And when you look at these two, you say, oh yeah, right. You know, the stitching quality on this one could be horrendous, but you'll never notice it, right? Because it's black on black. So uh, I've been involved with some factories where you think everything looks great. And then all of a sudden you, you order a shoe, you know, with contrast stitching and you find out that, man, their stitching is all over the place. But in this case, simple shoe, the stitching is straight. Uh, everything looks decent there. Um, so actually from a from a you know symmetricality is this shoe symmetrical yeah i mean other than other than the way that the toe tips don't quite line up um the rest of the shoes you know it looks pretty good 
you know we're looking at back height you know we're looking at collar heights you know we're gonna flip these over and look at the bottom and just say okay do the rubber colors match each other yes now there's another issue here you can see there's two different colors here and and I don't know how well you you can see it um, on the camera but what what we actually have here is this is the raw rubber and this is a fabric insert and you're saying to yourself wait what's up with that fabric insert uh, what's up with that is this shoe is textile which means that no matter where you you make this shoe when you import it into the United States you have to pay import duty on it and import duty on a textile shoe for a men's shoe is 20 percent right and if this shoe was leather say like like this one here this shoe both sneakers right rubber sole but this actually has a leather upper so this leather upper is actually nine percent duty okay so what does this have to do with the fabric insert on the bottom well companies well in in converse is not the only one there's lots of companies that are doing this now they've looked into the rules and they see that if the shoe has a fabric bottom over 50 percent of the ground contact right so you can see it's got some here in the toe some here in the heel and some along the edges here if 50 percent of the ground contact is textile then this is classified as a house slipper yeah don't ask why it, you know if you really want to understand more you can take our course on, on import duty. Um, just it's over at shoemakersacademy.com in the courses section, about halfway down the page. You'll see it, and it starts to explain why these things are this way. But there you go; it's imported as house duty. And actually, um, you know, this shoe actually has the same feature. It's really difficult to see because it's black on black. Or yeah, I can, I can just barely see it because it's black on black but you know what i'm going to do is um i'm going to pause this video for one second and i'm going to bring onto the screen a photograph so you can see what these things to what these things look like because when i was in the store they had some leather uppered ones and the canvas one and you can see this fabric insert and you can see the difference between it so that's i'll put that on the screen right now you can take a look at that okay so what else is going on with this shoot Let, let's let's take a look at some other things um you know this is vulcanized shoe so the whole shoe does get into an oven so you want to be sure that the shoe didn't get somehow damaged um the laces are put in afterwards so these are all fine here um <clears throat> because the shoe is is um has metal eyelets you want to just take a look at at the back of the eyelets right and if the, if the eyelet is not stamped correctly sometimes the back of the eyelet will split right if they don't have the if the if the back of the if the rivet face post is not quite long enough or it's too long it'll split and so this actually these all look and it's really easy to see because you'll just see breaks in it so uh, whatever and i'll look at the at the medial side rivets down here too for the, the vents they all look good too so you know you think after making i don't know whatever 100 million of these they would have figured it out but you know there you go you got you have to look and uh let's look at this other one here so this one uh oh i see what it's different is because that's metal it's black and it's a little bit it's not chipped but um it's a little bit worn here so yeah let's look at these this other one here so yeah this one you know when i first looked at it <coughs> excuse me it looked like it might have been uh chipped or broken but actually it's just the paint finish has come off a little bit during the riveting operation so that's that's totally fine <coughs> all right so let's look inside and you know the converse shoe the all-star is is um is a canvas shoe inside now pretty much but what i in what what our viewer noticed is that this shoe the lining is not canvas anymore and and that's why i brought i brought this old pair of down and this pair is a couple years old and what we're looking at here is the lining material here is is polyester um okay what's the difference why do you care right well um, generally in vulcanized shoes synthetic fabrics tend to melt so they've had to be careful to make sure they get uh, a polyester fabric that can withstand the heat because this part of the shoe definitely goes into the oven right now this footbed in fact doesn't go through the vulcanizing oven and part of the reason i can tell you that that it doesn't 
is because of the the foam. Now, when I look at this old this older Converse here, <clears throat> let me see, oh, here let me pull this up here. I'll pull this one out. You can see they both have a, a wedge, right? So the the footbed foam is a, it looks like a, a a crystallized PU. So it has some recycle, uh, some regrind PU foam in it, and it's it's relatively it's relatively dense. Feels pretty good, actually. You know what? I'm going to show you here is um, I've got a durometer tester, and as as a developer, you should you should get one of these because this is just tells you how dense the foam is that you're using right and you know what's the density typical like a typical running shoe might be 50 midsole might be 55 a footbed could be 45 or 35 but let's let's just take a look so here's the here's the probe it's got a little round uh, missile here and basically you're just going to press this together and you want to be careful because if you press too hard from the back you're going to get a reading of your finger so this says about 20, which is a pretty nice, soft footbed. Now, um, we're going to measure the face fabric, too, because the face fabric imparts a little bit of, of tension to it. And this, when you measure it through the face fabric, it's about 40. So you feel that. Okay, now, it's got a little wedge in the back here. Now, this wedge, to me, when I look at it, the way these letters are formed, I don't see any air bubbles. So this tells me that this is probably EVA foam instead of PU. And we're gonna we it's we'll, we'll measure it through the face here and we'll see what we get. We get about 30, and we'll also take a measurement through the side. Okay, about 30. So, so 30 is quite. This is actually pretty nice soft footbed. And the reason I want to compare it to the old one, and you can see this one from a few years ago, is a lot thinner. And uh, we'll just check the density of this foam too through the through the mesh. It's about 44. Um, in the bottom here, about 20. Okay, but the real difference here is 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 the cushioning for the heel, and this actually is regrind blown rubber scraps. So all the off trimmings from the outsole when this is assembled, they grind them up and they make another material out of it, and they use that as as a cushioning material. So this cushioning and and the the good news about this this cushioning material is it can withstand the vulcanizing oven. Um, where you're going to see this too is in the in the Vans shoe. You can see um, that they've used that same kind of material. Now that's that's actually well, we've got these two here. Let's just compare. So now that we have a nice cut, I'm going to measure on the cut section. That's better. Okay, about 36. Pretty good. Pretty soft. And here about 50. Okay. So the Vans is using a bit firmer, a bit firmer. Uh, cushioning under the he underneath the heel hmm. not you know I I think this one is going to be much more comfortable it you know how long is it going to last yeah good question um, EVA should be fine okay so that's the footbed so this is actually for being a for being a vulcanized shoe is going to be pretty comfortable so now now that we've got the footbed out I want to show you some other things here so you see these this little zigzag stitching line right so this is this is called strobel stitching so the upper is is made with the bottom completely open and the last thing they do before assembly is they sew on a piece of fabric that is in this shape and that makes the bottom and actually you can when you feel this you, that's right to the rubber so there's there's absolutely no thickness you are you know your finger you know you've got about a millimeter of fabric and then you're on the top surface of the rubber so you are you're you're on the street with this kind of shoe um the 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 high top one is made the same way it's got a little bit thicker of a strobel and it's got uh, some of an eco version here um actually feels a little bit feels a little bit stiffer now again this shoe is a few years old so the rubber compound could have aged a little bit but actually yeah this this rubber and let's okay so here this is the eva neurometer tester and i have a i'm going to have a rubber tester too and the, the difference here when you look at the rubber tester so this is c scale shore c or asker c and this is a shore a and a is what you're going to use for rubber so we'll put the the eva one aside and 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 actually here while we're here the difference here now is is the size of the of the probe right the foam ones has a round blunt probe 
and the rubber or the plastic one really has a really more needle like okay so we're going to set that aside now we're going to use the rubber and we're going to just check we're trying to find a nice s spot where we can get good contact for the rubber here and this looks like about 60 okay um that's what you'd expect and this one here is 67 or 65 okay depending on where we get it okay 64 60 okay it feels a little bit hard um you know and it may just because it may be just because this is a few years old and it's just been sitting so who knows okay so we uh we talked about strobel um you know is strobel the best way to make a vulcanized shoe it just is it's not it's not good or bad if you look at the vans um they've board lasted so you can see where the upper actually this may be easier to see here where the upper actually wraps around underneath and uh, it can be a little bit extra material there some companies don't like to do strobel or don't like to do board lasting because if you have leather then that leather is you're standing on it and you're basically wasting that material right so if you look at this i'll bring this over here too this this board lasted shoe you know if this is leather then all this relatively expensive material is actually underneath your foot the customer can't see it it's just extra weight waste of time right so so all, quite often you'll see shoes are handmade shoes might be board lasted like that or hiking boots you know can van could vans make this shoe by strobel they sure could why don't they you know maybe the same reason why they have this bump in the back it's just tradition who knows um i guess i could ask i do know some people over there all right so back to back to our converse and yeah so yeah you know this is a great looking shoe actually um everything's clean the hardware the material looks good you know the well actually here before we before we go any further here you know i'm looking at the footbed perfectly straight no wrinkles or anything i'll just run my hand on the inside of this one same thing no no wrinkles actually the lining here feels really quite nice not a not a wrinkle in the house um you know up up behind this toe cap sometimes you you, you could get a wrinkle but it all feels perfectly flat and smooth um, on this shoe too and actually i'm running my hand just along the edge too of the strobel to make sure there's no wrinkles or twisting or anything and and, and a shoe like this too where this comes together where the vamp and tongue meets the eye stay here you tenderly this is where the upper is, is getting closed so the stitches are going to go all the way through um you know what it feels really good so of the of the four different you know opportunities for uh for problems here it all looks pretty good now you know the the contrast stitching of course you're going to have it right if you have a light colored lining in a in a dark colored upper and you stitch it it makes this contrast which uh, not that great to my eye but it looks okay you know and, and actually knowing that these shoes all had sort of white canvas and now it's a little bit of this yellow golden yellow polyester yeah i don't know you know may, maybe not my favorite you know is this is this material more comfortable um yeah it feels nice and smooth it is pretty nice um you know the advantages of cotton over polyester you know probably some odor absorbent you know the the polyester will will last longer it won't staying the same way cotton does um it's easier to keep it clean um you know and, and so i started to ask myself like why why would they change it right yeah cotton uh, you know cotton and polyester you know if it's a quality material it shouldn't matter that much um but again from a sweat perspective you know polyester is very different from from cotton uh, the polyester will dry faster. It'll have less opportunity to stain, less opportunity to absorb moisture, all those things. The other thing that I looked at was, I was just curious because I hadn't thought about it, is what's happened to the price of cotton. And in about, in 2002, uh, sorry, 2022, the price of cotton doubled. Now, it's gone back down since then, but I guess if you're Converse, and you're looking at this shoe and you say wait a minute you know a, a, a major cost component not major but there's a fair amount of there's a fair amount of inner lining material here doubled then you want to do something about it now i did not look up the price table for for um 
for uh for polyester being a petrochemical based material oil prices actually have been pretty stable so plastic prices have been stable but with all this supply chain craziness you never know right and that could be the other reason too is yes we saw a spike in cotton price is that because of water shortage or whatever or was it all due to supply chain madness and you never know this shoe was made in vietnam so maybe their original source for cotton which could be india um maybe they weren't producing cotton or whatever disruption so here we have polyester so uh you know i'll have to report to you you know whether the polyester uh i don't know what that stuff is whether the polyester makes a difference uh but um but generally these are pretty decent looking shoes so folks that's it on that's it on converse um i really appreciate you coming here to shoemakersacademy.com uh, if you want to learn more about shoes inside and out uh, we have uh, our shoe material design guide where we have a, a, a discussion about this exact shoe and where this photograph of the cross section details all the components that are in the shoe that's in our um our sh designer's guide to shoe materials and we also have a course on shoe materials so again, thank you, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. And if you get time, cruise on over to the Shoemakers Academy website. Uh, the link is down below, and uh, there's plenty more shoe material, uh, shoemaking material. And uh, we'll do some more. If you, if there's another shoe you want to see a quality review on, uh, just let me know, and uh, we'll take a look. Thanks for watching.